Hello everyone and welcome to my new video and what is this video about? Well, before I tell you, I need to drink something. <clears throat> okay, so this video, uh, we're going to make some crazy beats, a bit like Aphex Twin. Everyone likes Aphex Twin, don't they? And if you don't, then maybe there's something a bit wrong with you. No, that's not a nice thing to say. Even my mum actually likes Aphex Twin. I once uh, stumbled in on my mother watching the end of the movie Marie Antoinette uh, uh, by Sofia Coppola. And uh, the ending credits is one of those piano pieces from that album he did with all the piano. On, and she was like, oh, this is very nice music. Everyone likes Aphex Twin. Old people, children, and people our age. <laughs> whatever your demographic is. If you haven't heard of Aphex Twin, I'm not sure why. You should go and find out. So I'm going to do like some beats, a bit like the stuff that he does on, on some of his more recent stuff, uh, like that. Um, what was that thing he did with the uh, kind of Google Street View video a couple of years ago? Um, yeah, sort of crazy kind of random beats using some 808 sounds which I've got here. This one's a cow, apparently. This is a cow sound. Didn't sound like a cow to me. Anyway, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to get a drum rack and I'm going to pull in a sampler. And I'm going to get all the kick drums from this. I'm going to use all of them. I'm going to use loads of kick drums. Um, and I'm going to drag them all into the simpler sampler, rather. And then I'm going to go to the zone editor, go to the velocity tab and give them all different velocities so that they all uh, are in their own various velocity. So at any time that uh, a, a note gets a different velocity, it will play a different kick drum sample. I'm going to use this sampler as my sort of template for the other ones. So I'm going to max out the decay in the release. I think I'm going to have one voice because I don't want the samples to overlap. I'll turn the sustain down, I'll put the decay and release up. I did that already, didn't I? The volume, the volume, let's maybe go at like minus four. We might have to change that later. Okay, so there's a couple of ways we can do this. Um, and I'm not sure which one to do first. Uh, I'll do, yeah, I'll do like the sort of random, the sort of crazy, crazy one first. So I'm going to, so somewhere in my thing, I've got a uh, MIDI effect rack that I made once. Where did I put it? I thought I put it here. Um, it must be in here then. There it is. I got this probability rack, which I made uh, a while ago, and there is a video about it. So go and watch the video because I'm not going to go through it again. Basically, it's just a chain with, uh, <clears throat> well, another chain with a uh, load of different velocity zones. And basically, depending on what velocity comes in, we'll let the note go through. So you use velocity to kind of work like probability. Um, so i just close that. Um, so yeah, that's kind of what I'm going to use for the kick. And I think I'll maybe copy that. And then I'll replace all of these sounds with all of these snares. Let me just close a few things here. I don't need all that open. Uh, where are the snares? There we go. Let's get all of these snares. There's not that many. There's 16. 16 Oh, I didn't have the tab open. Damn. I'm going to have to do that again. Oh, I could have just put them in there. What was I thinking? Silly ass. Okay. Right. Let's get those and let's put them in there. Okay. And then let's velocity range those babies. Okay. So maybe what I might do now is map these two probability knobs to the, to one knob on the on the drum rack so that I can control the probability of all of them. I just need to turn my phone off. It's distracting me. Go away phone. Um, okay. So I'm just going to go into the MIDI clip here and then I'm going to just draw in some notes like this. It doesn't really matter because the probability is going to kind of determine the rhythm. So in fact, if I max all of these out, it wouldn't really make any difference um, because the probability is going to decide what notes come through. So let's just have a little listen to that, shall we? That's cool. So if we pull that probability down, we don't get much. Which is nice. 
Let me turn it up. Okay, but maybe we want uh, it to be a bit more musical. I'm going to take out some of these notes. Uh, maybe take these ones out here and here and here like that. Okay, I'm going to copy that snare to there and I'm going to replace all of those with the hi-hats. Got some hi-hats here. There's only not that many hi-hats, but that's okay. Let's go back in here. We'll do the same thing. Distribute ranges equally with the velocity. This is where it starts to get pretty good, pretty funky. I mean, we're at 160, you know, which is a nice fast, fast tempo. drum bust that like an idiot now. Where's my drum bust? Not too much though. Just because my, uh, I'm peeking in the red. I'm in the red. Right. There we go. I'm going to chuck a limiter on my master track. Don't criticize me for that, okay? It's a waste of time. Okay, those hi-hats are a little aggressive. In fact, maybe everything is. So why don't we pull the volume down to minus eight dB. Let's copy value to siblings. Let's maybe pull the hi-hats down a little bit more. Let's go to minus 12. What exactly is going on here? Well, basically, the probability MIDI rack that I made is obviously making decisions on what MIDI notes it's choosing to let through. In the process of doing that, random velocity is choosing which sample is being played because I've velocity mapped a whole load of sounds. So that kind of gives us a little bit of timbral, timbreal, timbreal. Uh, variety, um, which is makes it a little bit more funky and interesting and less robotic. Um, and that's kind of probably one of the appeals of Aphex Twin's music is that for someone who is renowned for doing largely electronic music, it's it sounds very human and very human quality to it. So now I don't know well, I do know a little bit about the type of equipment that he uses. I'm not that much of an Aphex Twin nerd. I'm a little bit more of a square pusher nerd when it comes to what gear he uses and stuff. Um, you know, but I think it's he's been very public about the fact that he's used a Player Pro tracker and the Circlon sequencer and uh, God knows what else. Um, you know, I never really know whether any of that's true because we all know that the man's a professional bullshitter. So that could all be nonsense. He could actually n own no drum machines at all and just be torrenting sounds off the internet like the rest of us. No one knows. That's half of the charm. It's all a mystery. So this is just like a, a fun way I thought might be uh, uh, something for people to explore if you want to kind of examine that style of uh, drum beats without having to do too much complicated sequencing, which I personally hate. I hate sequencing. I just like to hit go and let the computer do it for me. That, um, that one there, I'm going to copy that and I'm going to replace all of those sounds with um, the sounds that I haven't used yet. Let's have a look here. So I don't know which ones they are. Okay, well, I didn't use the clap. So I'll take, okay, I'll take all of those and plonk them in. Oh, sorry. <laughs> okay, there and there. And then I'll get the hi-hats I did, the kicks I did, the the ride. No, I'll use the ride later. The rims. Everyone likes a good rim. Um, sorry. <laughs> I'm going to hell. I'm going to hell for what I just said. Uh, the toms, the toms. Uh, let's get the toms and um, put them in there. Okay, right. Let's. I can't believe I just made that joke. I'm, so, that's, I'm such a fucking child. That's no wonder I'm not married. Right. Okay, let's. Uh, 
let's now draw in some MIDI for those. All right, these ones I want to put like some reverb on because one thing I like about the, some of these uh, Aphex Twin tracks where he's using all the old drum machines is that he'll suddenly just rocket a sound through a, a load of reverb. I like that. I like that thing he does and when other people do it and I do it all the time, my own music. I'm going to put a reverb on that. And I'm actually going to, hmm, I would maybe like to scale this macro against all the others and I'm actually going to scale it from zero to 64 so that when it's maxed out it's not quite as uh, probabilistic as the other ones down and we've got a, a Apex Twin style breakdown. So that's pretty cool. I, 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 I quite like that. I can have a good time vibing out with that. But maybe that's not your thing. And if that's not your thing, that's all right. That's fine. We can have a look at some other ways. So I'm just going to um, macro the probability MIDI rack thing on and off. Uh, so I can turn it off. Uh, oh, wait a minute. Oh, brain freeze. Okay, so they are all off. So now that we just have just the MIDI... Okay, so we've got no random velocities and we've got no uh, probability. We've just got this raw MIDI. So what I'm going to do is kind of do the same thing, but use a load of MIDI clips and follow action. So I'm just going to sort of start by doing a really um, like basic clip with, say, like um, that and this. I hate this stuff. I hate doing this. Okay, All right, let's listen to this. Okay. And then I'm just going to create copies of that. And as I make a new one, I'm going to introduce more MIDI notes. Okay. Um, okay. Um, okay. And then let's do this one now. And then we'll just do like. do it and then let's do this one for this one i'm going to do like more ratchety more kind of ratchety stuff on the snares maybe do that kind of sort of fast uh let's see what we have here let's uh, stuff like this yeah. Yeah. And then i'll do it for uh change it okay i'm going to take that top one and i'm going to do the similar sort of thing but for this one i'm just going to do it for the high hats uh, yeah. and uh maybe well actually i'll take that other one and uh, maybe do like maybe something That'll do. Okay, so basically what I'm going to do now is that now the thing is we've uh, got velocity uh, velocity drawn into the MIDI. So I don't want to randomize the velocity uh, because where we've got these ratchety fast notes, we're going to get a new sound every time that we get a MIDI note. So I'm not really too sure what to do about that. I guess hmm, I guess we'll leave it for now and I'll think of another way later. I'm going to select all of those. 
and I'm going to go to launch the launch tab down here, hit legato, select other. And then I'm going to just going to maybe start by, I'm going to start the same way. I'm going to start maybe, um, start high at, uh, I'll start at two and then I'll duplicate those, give them a slightly different color and I'll have these go lower for one. I'll duplicate those again, go, uh, slightly lower for those, maybe two there, and I'll give those a different color as well. And let's see what that sounds like. Okay, so one thing we could do with that is that um, that's a little bit more robotic sounding because it's triggering the same sounds each time. So maybe We'll get a, a velocity plug in and I'll just stick it at the front. And by default, this uh, loads a preset, which I made, which basically means everything's random. But we can simply turn that off by dialing the random down. And then we can kind of introduce some random by playing around with the high output and then introducing a little bit of random as we go. So we can Yeah. You can hear on the fast notes that it kind of goes because it's changing the sample each time. There isn't really a way to get around that that I can think of right now in my brain. Um, so we're just going to make do. actual music as well i don't know i don't want to make a copy afix twin video but like i mean i do have like maybe i could try like a baseline or something but then i, ooh, I don't know i'll think about that for a minute i'm going to go back to um make a note of uh well i, I tell you what i'll do i'll just move all these midi clips down and then i'll just draw the kind of thing that i had before which was uh something like this was something like that that and then maybe Oh, I can't remember something like that and that and that and that. And then there was all of these hi hats and then there was all of this junk. And I'm going to keep that there and I'll turn on the probability. I preferred the probability myself. Uh, let's listen to that for a minute whilst I think about maybe how to do the music. <laughs> I don't really know if I want to try and him I, there's a there's a lot of like um there's a lot of like you know like there like there are for a lot of superstars there are a lot of dickhead followers who might come in and start leaving comments like oh you don't do that that's how they talk that is how they talk. that's not how they talk I'm sorry I'm trolling people who haven't even trolled me yet. That's that's the kind of person I am. Okay, I thought of a way that maybe I could do some music. So I've I've got like a load of like bass samples, synthy bass samples. I could maybe use those. So I'll get my I like to use sampler. I like to use sampler for everything. Um uh where are those sounds? Um they are in here and they are all B they are all labeled B S E, which is kind of funny, as that was a, a disease break. 20 years ago and we're going through one right now so. but I think it stands for bass electric so I'm going to plonk those into sampler and again I'm going to map those 
velocity wise. I haven't got the push. I haven't got a keyboard. I've got push, but I don't really like doing music on the push. I prefer it for beats. Um, and I haven't got it mains plugged, which means it's really dim. A bit like me. <laughs> right. So I'll get um, I get an arpeggiator and see what see what. Um, yeah. All right, let's pull in that velocity. Okay, that's a little bit too much. Too much shifting around, so I'll... Okay, I want one voice. I'll turn off the filter for now. So I, every time I sort of think about this sort of stuff, I think I want to like stack a load of arpeggio, so arpeggiators, but I can never really quite get the result I want. It's already there. It's... I'd like an arpeggiator that changes rate in a musical way uh, whilst you're using it. Um, I could make one in Max for Live. I'm not going to do that right now, but I'm sure there are ones out there that exist. I always really liked the... Uh, the thing on the, uh, I had a Korg Electribe uh, e e -M -X -E -S -X, the blue one with the with the kind of ribbon and the crossfader, and that was like a really fun, like little, um, you moved the crossfader up and down to change the pitch, and you moved the ribbon up and down to change the note length. I always think Korg make fun things like that. Um, anyway, let's see what's going on with this. I can't even really hear it. I like to get this. I like to get this done pretty quickly, and if it's not happening immediately, I tend to think it's just fuck it off. Let's see what we get with this. Okay, velocity. Switch the velocity. Yeah, that's kind of working. Uh, let's get a note length in here. Hang on a minute. This this is terrible. This is the worst video ever. Okay, it's kind of getting there. Let's try a different sound. All right, I'm kind of getting something. That's a little bit more like what I was thinking. So I'll take one of these, this one. Okay, that's pretty good. Uh, I'm gonna try and do like, um, oh, didn't mean to do that. Okay, let's group the note length and then we'll have some different note lengths as well. So this one will have a one over eight maybe and this one will have a one over four, and I'll do the same thing here. It's all getting a bit complicated, oh, but it might sound good, so it's worth it. Okay, and then we'll try the portamento. Bad. Let's hear it with a bit of a beat. Oops, I just uh, did something on the push by mistake. I didn't mean to do that. I um, <sighs> I don't want to uh, want that to stay like that. Okay, go. No, this one. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. 
stick. I will not give up. I'll go for C minor. Uh, I'll just make some changes here. Oh, actually, make that a major sixth. Okay, let's take these guys out. And that. Oh, no. Oh, I've made a mistake. Uh, this one, this one, this one, this one. Goodbye, goodbye. Okay. Uh, that. That one there, yeah. So let's pull in. Let's pull in a random here. See what this is. Maybe not there. Let's put, let's put that after the crazy arpeggio thing. to change the start position of the sample so that it's less, so it's not squelchy all the time. Uh, sample offset, re-trigger. Let's maybe increase it by like 20. Bit of attack. That's a bit better. That's, that's getting a little bit better, yeah. It's it's kind of wibbly. It's not not great, but it's it's interesting. Same thing, but for maybe like the chords and like the melody bits. Uh, I'll take the same samples, but I'm going to pitch them up loads. They're bass samples, but it doesn't matter. We're going to pitch them up loads. And... Oh. Shush. Shush, please. Okay, thanks. Right. Okay, so I'm going to go into the sample editor and I'm going to choose them all to forward, backwards, reverse. <laughs> So that they will sort of go backwards and forwards like that. Um, and I'm going to select them with velocity again. And... Ah, they're not distributed yet. There we go. Okay, so what I'm going to do is do that kind of microtuning thing, but I'm not really going to do microtuning because um, I can't be bothered. So I'm just going to slightly down tune um, the notes uh, slightly as they happen. The LFOs in Sampler are polyphonic, I think. Okay. Loads of attack for this kind of this sort of apex bit. We made a bit of high pass filtering. Oh, 
Why is it gone? Why is it all gone? What happened? Oh, it's because that key thing is on by default. That's irritating. Okay, I think I've applied a little bit too much pitch modulation there. I'm going to add a tiny, tiny little bit more to make it go a bit wibbly wobbly. Okay, we're going to need loads of reverb. do like some more kind of crazy generative stuff here so I'm just going to um, draw in like some MIDI here show me the MIDI show me the MIDI there okay so um, I'll draw in some notes here yeah that'll do okay I wouldn't normally do it this way but Did I even do that right? <laughs> okay, let's get rid of that high C and then that's, that'll be easy to copy. We'll just go like that. Okay, so let's take all of that. And we'll do... Get the arpeggiator. Set it to random. Pretty, pretty slow rate. This is going to happen slowly. Okay, let's see what that's like. with the re trigger turned off. This will be draining on your computer resources, but mine's coping with it quite well. I might, knock, I might knock it back down to four. Thank you. 
go down to like one twenty, then we're we're kind of approaching ambient works era, maybe. Maybe one, 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 two. Maybe let's see what that's like. another thing to do to make it sound very ambient worksy is to run the whole thing through awful like <laughs> overdrive <laughs> with not much gain let's see what that's like yeah <laughs> So that was a little uh, experiment in trying to copy Aphex Twin. <laughs> um, I hope you liked that. I'm going to now zip that project up and put it on my Patreon page. And so if you're already a patron, thank you for that. And uh, you can download that. Or if you'd like to become a patron, uh, th I would appreciate that very much. But I'm not like trying to come across like some entitled streamer. OK, you know, if you don't do it, that's fine. I don't expect nothing from you people. OK, it's fine. Thanks. <laughs> Sorry. Bye.